So now let's move on to the next problem. So the problem statement says that print the binary representation of a number using recursion. So let's say we have a number 14. Then I simply have to convert this 14 into its binary form and print that binary representation, right? So 14 in binary is triple one zero. So my answer would simply be triple one zero. The important part in this problem is that we have to perform this conversion of decimal to binary using recursion, right? So now let's move on to the approach, right? So let's say we have this 14. So firstly, I need to convert this 14 into binary, right? So I'll divide this 14 by 2. So 2 7 times is 14 and I'll write remainder over here. So 2 7 times is 14. So we have no remainder. So I'll write 0 over here. Now I'll divide this 7 by 2. So 2 3 times is 6 which is 1 less than 7. Hence we have 1 as remainder. Now I'll divide this 3 by 2. So 2 1 times is 2 which is 1 less than 3. So again we have a remainder. Now I'll divide this 1 by 2. So 2 0 times is 0. So which is 1 less than 1. So again we have a remainder 1 right. So if I write these numbers from down to up. So we have 1 1 1 0. So we have 1 1 1 0. So this is the binary representation of 14, right? This is the binary representation of 14, which is in decimals, right? So we simply have to print this binary representation of 14 using recursion. So firstly, I want you to try this problem on your own. Then you may come back and see the solution. Now let's try to write the recursive function for this. So over here I have 14, right? Which is the number given to us. So this 14 is nothing but n. This 14 is nothing but n, right? So I'll create a recursive function or I'll create a function fun having an argument n, right? That is the number given to us. Now, this 14, I would divide this 14 by 2 and this is now my new value of n, right? So, inside this function fun, I would call this, I would recursively call this function fun again and this time my argument would be n divided by 2, right? Because we can see that 14 has been converted to 7 then 7 has been converted to 3, then 3 has been converted to 1, then 1 has been converted to 0. So we are simply dividing n by 2, right? And you should be aware that this division of n by 2 would result in the quotient part of the division, right? That is, if I divide 7 by 2, then the quotient part of this division would be 3, right? Hence, on dividing 7 by 2, I'll get 3. So, my function fun would recursively call fun n by 2. Now, what would be my base condition? 14 is converted to 7, 7 is converted to 3, 3 is converted to 1, then 1 is converted to 0. At the very end, we cannot divide 0 any further, right? So when my n, when the value of my n is 0, then I have to stop. So my base condition would be if n is equals to equals to 0 or if the value of n is 0 then simply return or simply go back to the previously called function right or, or simply return. So after this fun n divided by 2 I would simply print I would simply print n modulus 2 right I would simply print n modulus 2 which is simply the remainder after dividing n by 2 right so I would simply print the remainder after dividing n by 2, right? And then we would simply close this function fun. Now let's see how this function fun actually works. So initially the value of n is 14. So initially we would call this function fun 14 from the main, right? So n over here is 14. 
So is n equals to equals to zero? Is 14 is equals to zero? The answer is no. So we would not execute this return statement. So now we are at this line fun n divided by two. N is 14. On dividing 14 by two, I'll get seven. So this line over here would would now call fun seven divided uh, 14 divided by two, which is seven, right? So now I am calling fun seven. So fun 14 would call this function fun seven, right? So let me quickly erase this. So now the value of n is seven. So is seven equals to zero? The answer is no. So we would not again execute this return statement. After this, we are again at this line fun n divided by two. n this time is seven. So on dividing seven by two, the answer would be three because this division would simply get me the question part. So on dividing seven by two, I'll get three over here, right? So over here, I'll simply call fun three, right? So fun seven would now call fun three. So now the value of n is three, right? So now the value of n is three. So is three equals to zero? The answer is no. So again, we would not execute this return statement. Again, we would execute this line fun n divided by two. n is three, three divided by two is one. So this time fun three would now call fun one. Similarly, fun one would now call fun zero because on dividing one by two, I'll get a zero, right? So at this moment, at this moment, the value of n is zero. We can see that over here the value of n is 0, right? So the value of n is 0. So is n equals to 0? The answer is yes. So now we would execute this return statement. So now we would go back to the previously called function. So this fun 0 was called by fun 1. So now we would go back to the previously called function, which is fun 1, right? So now we would go back to the previously called function. Let me quickly erase this. So now we are back to the previous function fun one, right? So over here n was one, this was false. This, this was not executed. We have executed this line fun zero because one divided by two is zero. So we have executed this line. This line has been executed. So now we are at this statement print n mod two. So n is one, n is one, one divided by two. So what is the remainder after dividing one by two? The answer is one. So now the first thing that we would print is one. So one is the first number to be printed or the first digit to be printed, right? So now we have executed this line. Now we would go to the end of this function, right? So again, we would go back to the previously called function. Again, fun one would go back to the previously called function, which was fun three, right? So let me quickly uh, erase this fun three. Uh, over here we have print print n by two. So after this, so now, so now we are back to fun three, right? So n over here is three. So is n equals to zero? The answer was no. So we, so this line was false. We have executed this line, which was fun one. We have executed this line. This time we would print n divided by two, right? n this time is three. So on dividing three by two, the remainder is one. So again, we would print one, right? So now again, we would print this one. Again, we would go here. Again, this is the end of this function. So again, we would go back to the previously called function. So fun three would again go back to the previously called function, which is fun seven, right? So now the value of n is seven, right? So again, at fun seven, this was false, this was false. Again, we have executed this line, which was fun three. So this has been executed. So now again, we are at this line fun or sorry, print n divided by two, right? So n is seven, seven divided by two. So what is the remainder after dividing seven by two? The answer is one. So on dividing seven by two, again, the value is one. So again, we would print one, right? So again, after printing this one, we would go to the end of this function. So after the, after the end of this function, again, we would go back to the previously called function. So again, we would go back to the previously called function, which is, which was fun 
14 right so this time the value of n is nothing but 14 again this was false this was this was not executed this has been execu executed fun 7 and over here at this line print n mod 2 the value of n was 14 right so n is 14 on dividing 14 by 2 what is the remainder the remainder is 0 because 14 is completely divisible by 2 so now we would print 0 right after this after printing this 0 again this is the end of this function so now we have executed this 14 also right so this would again go back to the main function right what so what is the final output that we have it is triple one zero right which is the binary of 14 right so using recursion we can print this uh, binary of decimal numbers right so moving on to the code this is the exact same function that we have discussed just now and inside the main function i'll simply input the number inside this n and I'll simply call this fun function, right? So let's just run the code and see whether will we get the correct output or not. So for 14, we should get triple one zero. And here we can see that our answer is triple one zero, right? 